Hi, my name is Kaisa Krusko, and I am a family law attorney in Bedford, New Hampshire. Financial affidavits are an especially important document in a divorce because they will be the basis of orders that will be issued on child support, alimony, or property division. Here are some things that you need to know about financial affidavits. You are required to bring a financial affidavit pursuant to Court Rule 2.16 to any hearing that will uh, be the basis for issuance of orders on child support, alimony, uh, property division, or the appointment of a guardian ad litem or a mediator. You need to be prepared ahead of time to bring your financial affidavit and provide it to the court. Your financial affidavit will need to be sworn under oath, so make sure you bring a copy that has been notarized and provide a copy to the other party in your case. Financial affidavits are confidential pursuant to 2.16 and so you should not need to worry about people seeing your financial affidavit and the important numbers that are contained in there because they'll be kept in a separate part of the file that will be accessible only to the parties. You're required to disclose every source of income that you have, including wages, rental income, um, or other sources of income that you may have. You are required to list each asset that you own and its value. If you do not know the value, you must write that you do not know the value and that it is an estimated value. Why is it important to get these numbers right? Pursuant to the court rules, if you fail to disclose an asset and that later becomes known to the court, that asset could be awarded to the other party as a sanction for your failure to disclose that asset. The court also has the discretion to issue any other kind of sanction um, it deems appropriate for your failure to list that asset. It is also important to get your financial affidavit right because this is a document that is going to be used throughout the course of your divorce or child support case. For example, if you submit a document at the temporary hearing that is not accurate, that could come back later to haunt you at a final hearing when those numbers are going to be used. Here are some important things to remember when you are completing your financial affidavit. If you are paid on a weekly basis, you must multiply that weekly gross number by 4.33. That will give you the accurate monthly figure for the income. If you are paid on a bi-weekly basis, you must multiply your gross income by 2.17 to get the accurate monthly figure. The affidavit requires you to provide the cost of any health insurance that you pay for the children of your relationship with the other party. It's a common mistake to put the total amount of health insurance that you pay for your entire family, but you want to be careful and make sure that you provide only the actual cost of the child's health insurance. You can get this number by getting a, a printout of the health insurance rates from your human resources company and you will deduct the amount of either your single coverage from the family plan, or if your spouse is on the family plan, you would deduct the cost of the two-person plan from the family plan. That will give you the accurate number. Remember, if these are weekly figures, to use 4.33 to multiply that to get the accurate monthly figure. Make sure you use the additional information section when you're listing assets. For example, when you are listing your checking account, your checking account balance probably varies each month um, or even on a daily basis. So it's hard to have an accurate to the date picture of what's actually in your account. Estimate as best you can and provide in the additional information section that it is an estimate and that the account balance varies. Make sure you list out other information that might be helpful to the court. For example, under the vehicle information, make sure you put down the vehicle that you drive, the make, the model, uh, perhaps the mileage to give a better picture of the asset and, um, and what it might be worth. Under debts, if you do not have enough lines to provide all of the information regarding any outstanding debts, use an additional page to attach to the financial affidavit. Make sure you always attach a pay stub or other verification of your income. If you're self-employed, attach a Schedule C to your financial affidavit. It is important to be accurate on your monthly expenses. Do not wing it. 
Make sure that you give the court a clear, concise picture of what your actual expenses are. Go through your utility bills and make sure that you know what your monthly electricity bill is and write that down accurately on the financial affidavit. Under the federal income tax section, uh, make sure that you look at your pay stub, know what's taken out each week, and put an accurate number down. Similarly, for Social Security and Medicare, make sure you look at your pay stub and write down accurately what you pay on a monthly basis. Thank you for tuning in, and if you need further information, please feel free to contact my office by telephone, email, or on my website.